this video, I want to continue the series that I've been doing on racial capitalism and space privatization. I've really enjoyed starting off this series, being able to talk about a lot of the various ways that you can kind of read this argument, whether it be on the affirmative and the negative. I really feel like on this uh, resolution, the topic is really as big as your imagination. So I feel like being able to kind of figure out where are some of the core criticisms that are really engaged in the history of what space exploration really looks like is super important to how you can think about like what the types of like arguments that really should be kind of like meta on this topic will really look like. And I definitely think there are really good arguments to be made about like what uh, types of like uh, ideas are kind of like permitted from racial capitalism that can be critiqued uh, as like things that you can use against this set of argumentation, which is why I kind of like asked people to kind of watch the continuity of videos so they can get like a fuller idea of a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about throughout the series. I think that watching the intro to racial capitalism and space privatization is super important in order to get a good idea of where we are now, especially when we're doing the next two videos on how to answer racial capitalism when it's prevent presented as an affirmative on the space privatization resolution. I think it's super important to think about when we were talking about what space racial capitalism looks like as an affirmative in the last couple of videos in order to get really where we're going here and to get a better idea of like how these arguments are, are formed in order to, for you to have a better understanding of like how we're responding to them because in this video i'll be kind of talking about what are the, some of the major priorities that you need to have against this argumentation and then what you should be kind of like thinking about in terms of the case arguments and framework and t arguments that you should be building in order to complement like maybe some other arguments you want to make or to be able to go for with other things like criticism counterplies and dissatisfaction i'll be talking about in the next video but to kind of start off with this one i really just want to talk about what are some of the major priorities that you should kind of be focused on when you're thinking about uh, these affirmatives and how you should be attacking them? The first thing is that I think that a lot of these affirmatives will have really good hist uh, historization of like the way in which the resolution is able to like exist in terms of like how uh, space uh, trips become financialized. I definitely think that there's an intimate tie between the history of space exploration and the desire to be in space in the way in which racial capitalism is kind of prevented, presented not only as a system of like financial extraction, but also as a system of values. And so I think that the way in which you can kind of like think about this is like not whether or not the 1AC is connected to that historical conjecture, but whether or not the 1AC has a resolution for the particular type of violence that is kind of like offered by the uh, non, uh, by the kind of like forgetting of space or the refusal to kind of think about it as an inevitable process of like human development. And I think that there is like a good amount of literature for you kind of swing that the 1AC's kind of like lack of a method or your ability to indict its possibility of a lack of a method is really strong no matter like what vantage point you're going for from framework all the way to criticisms and the rest of the stuff that we've kind of talked about in terms of negative options. I think think that this kind of like indicted of the method and trying to figure out at a base the way it kind of generates a different relationship to space and exploration is incredibly important because that like just active withdrawal from having conversations about space as a whole allow you to make arguments about like how without that there are kind of like alt-right takeovers white supremacist takeovers of conversations about space and those things really aren't stopped or checked by the affirmative in a world where there isn't a different type of relationship to the way in which we're able to think about the colonization of space as a whole and I think that being able to prioritize things like this when you're trying to figure out like where you should be attacking this affirmative in order Order to push them to have a better method explanation is really important because the more that they kind of like expand their uh, definition not only can you find places where they can contradict their relationship to space uh, space in spatiality but also you're able to find places where they're not really able to check a lot of the impacts that are produced by just like the refusal to kind of like think about the resolution on its own terms and like the refusal to think about like the inevitability of space uh flight and space uh exploration as a whole i think that then when you're kind of trying to figure out what are some of the other case arguments that you should be kind of pushing with this obviously i think if you're a policy team a lot of the like have good explanations and arguments about like tech are super strong in this resolution because like tech based arguments are just like really important in terms of space development as a whole arguments about like how space development is like key to development of new technology or the sustainability of such things are obviously really pertinent questions to like whether or not capitalism is a sustainable enough system to create the possibility for like human life to thrive even if it isn't on earth which is something like i think is a key pivot that a lot of arguments that a lot of teams can kind of make on this resolution particularly but i also think that outside of those terms uh for teams that are kind of just looking at for more generic spots a lot of the arguments that i think you really want to go to is the 1ac especially if it's focused on the concept of whitey of the uh, whitey on the moon it's particular um, over sanitization or over infatuation with the idea of whiteness as this thing that kind of like makes all of our political reactions to the way in which like violence happens as something that has put it in reaction to whiteness it doesn't allow for like these kinds of that like excess creation of like independent institutions that actually allow for a different way of organizing against forces of violence and it only allows for kind of like contingent various relationships to the ways in which we choose to like respond and create reactionary responses to the world around us which I think allows you to link it to like various other structural criticisms that are invested in why that type of 
of like particular relationship or answer towards like sovereignty and the problem of like whiteness as a whole is one that doesn't actually allow for like resistance to exist kind of like independently of such things and why it creates like cycles of cruel optimism and like other things that I think are really important like impacts to be able to have accessible if you want to go for other types of strategies and I think that when you're kind of like switching over to what this maybe looks like in terms of a framework T strategy a lot of the arguments I think that you can kind of take from like what we were kind of talking about earlier from like how you really create method hits against this particular type of affirmative then transition into like what the importance of the resolution is I definitely feel like this is a resolution where I feel like a lot of teams can find success and will find it really fruitful to really expand on why talking about space is super important and why the kind of ability to have conversations about space exploration as an inevitable part of the way in which human development operates is key to figuring out whether or not space will be the next frontier for like the continuation of systems of violence or whether or not it can be har harnessed for like human good and the change in the relationship that we have to society as a whole in spatialization all of which I think are really relevant questions to the ways in which like we think about like what like spatial politics are really doing and why they're important to the conversations that we're having and I also think that the more that you're able to push that the more you're able to raise the bar on why like precise details are really important to those conversations which not only make it a question of whether or not you're able to like win some of like the skill-based offense that comes from framework but whether or not you're able to win some of like the procedural values as well because of the way in which you're kind of like winning that these like technical and precise details are really important to the framing of like public dialogue and various types of policies that kind of determine the future of like what kind of like our access to space will look like and I think that your argument needs to like really give like our, uh, a lot of like uh, wiggle room in order to explain like how different uh, uses of like public dialogue and ways of thinking about like particularly uh, legal uh, um, definitions and legal kind of like preciseness for how we think about space is important to making space like not operable around a particular universalized human figure is important to make it seem equitable and distributable between populations in ways that don't replicate the same forms of structural violence that the kind of like affirmative critique is situated in and I think there allows you kind of to, to um, basically divorce the potential for what the topic can do away from the kind of like history that the affirmative is probably like really betting a lot of their edge on and I think that combined with a lot of your arguments about why those things like are kind of the necessary um uh, justifications for why procedural norms kind of sh also should be valued in the face of that can be really helpful for kind of building out a full out strategy to make all, like, all of this workable. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and hopefully you'll tune into more videos I'll be doing talking about racial capitalism and space and other stuff and yeah, thank you as always.